LL Minecraft, who is the best? Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Let's start the best video of decades. Hello internet, welcome to game theory. Hi! And the grand finale to our most the most important game of the decade. Important games of the decade list. Last week we covered the first six honorable mentions. Games that, by all accounts, truly shaped the industry over the last ten years. Po True, sure, sure, sure. Mini clip. We mobile games. Pokemon Go introduced us to new ways to play, while Dark Souls reintroduced us to the old ways with completely modern twists. Amnesia ushered in a new generation of creators, both developer and player, while Mario Maker taught us that we could all be creators. Battlefront 2 exposed our industry's worst impulses, while Fortnite showed the power and profitability that comes when you find a healthy balance between solid gameplay and aesthetic microtransaction. In total, these were games that gave rise to new genres gave life to old genres, welcomed in new players while reinvigorating old ones, and overall got us to look at gaming in completely new ways. True, completely new ways. But I reserve today's episode for two very special titles. Games that not only influenced the world of video games, but whose ripple effects went far beyond the realm of just pixel and player. These two games that we're talking about today gave- Why you that pixel and player is more to us? The screen and a controller gave rise to entire industries by changing the way that we view and consume our games. And in the process, they managed to alter the landscape of the modern internet. Yes, the entire internet in ways that'll continue to persist long into the next decade. If all of that sounds a bit grandiose, well, that's why this video isn't just two minutes long with me naming the games and peacing out. <laughs> game, peace out! It's like, game one, game two, bye-bye. No, 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 of course not, of course not, of course not. No, I am here to celebrate what made these titles great and make a case for the great. massive role that a simple video game can have on global culture. So, do you know what my two most important games of the decade are? Make your guesses down in the comments below. I mean, the first is practically a gimme. It's one that shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about Minecraft. Minecraft! Officially released in 2011, it almost feels like cheating to start a video about most influential games of the decade by talking about <laughs> Minecraft. I mean, this should be an easy slam dunk, right? It is the best selling video game ever, period. End of story. More units than Super Mario Brothers, more than Wii Sports, heck, even more than Tetris. <laughs> Tetris has been around since, like, the caveman days. I guarantee there's a hieroglyphic someplace on the Rosetta Stone where four blocks fit into place and clear a line. Here's a number for you, friends. One 180 million copies sold. That's crazy! And note, that was before 2020 in which people like, have been stay at home and you know, gave rise to a lot of Minecraft uh, content creators. Like, Dream! <laughs> What makes that number all the more impressive is that Minecraft is an indie game. Because indie. Minecraft is literally everywhere these days, it's easy to forget that the whole thing started when Notch, one man, worked on the game in his spare time for a full year before quitting his day job to pursue the work on it for full time. In a decade that was defined by indie creation shaking up a bloated and stagnant games industry, giving rise to massive indie smash hits like Five Nights at Freddy's, Rocket League, and Cuphead, Minecraft stood out among the rest. I mean, lots of kids dream of one day growing up and creating their own video game, but stories like Minecraft's make the indie dream feel more tangible to creatives all around the world. In the process, Minecraft popularized an entire genre of building games. Some games obviously draw direct inspiration from Minecraft, like Terraria, Roblox, and Dragon Quest builders, not to mention the dozens of other direct imitators. But you've got less obvious inclusions here as well. You've got a ton of other survival building games, like Don't Starve, Subnautica, and Ark Survival. Even Fallout 4 decided to add a base building mode. Most of it is originating back to Minecraft, showing the world that it's just fun to build things. And it's true, it's just fun to build things, isn't it? We are the creator, we are the god of this game. It's fun. That Eagles. 
It's the lesson Nintendo that a lot of game developers toward the back half of this decade took to heart. In short, we all just want to create, and Minecraft unleashed that potential in the world of gaming at a scale that had never been seen before. Minecraft is the world's largest Lego set, not even referring to its own physical Lego set existing in toy stores. No, in the game, it's a... <laughs> yes, there's a literal physical set of Legos uh, dedicated for Minecraft, so yeah, Minecraft is big. Is just ultimately big. Case where an aspiring designer can create the Statue of Liberty, the Eiffel Tower, the Enterprise from Star Trek, complete with every room, every turbo lift, and every bridge panel faithfully recreated. Heck, people have even built full on computers inside of Minecraft. If you want to play Pokemon on a virtual Game Boy Advance, you can do that within the game of Minecraft. But it's one thing to just create those things within a virtual world, it's another thing for those things to cross over into real life. Since 2012, a United Nations program called Block by Block has used Minecraft as a way for people to participate in the design of public spaces. People design real public spaces like parks inside of Minecraft, which then get developed into full-on real-world designs. Even schools have started to realize Minecraft's potential as an educational tool. Minecraft is an education edition that partners with organizations like the World Wildlife Fund, creating worlds that are designed to be used for teaching subjects like ecosystems and biodiversity. All of that would be more than enough to get a top placement on a list of the most important games of the 2010s. Heck, the most important games of all time. But there's one other massive thing that Minecraft's done that absolutely merits mentioning here, and that is propelling YouTube into the entertainment behemoth that it is today. Now, I did a whole video about this back in 2017, but the TLDR here is that way back in 2012, the YouTube recommendation algorithm changed to reward videos for watch time. In other words, the amount of minutes that you spent watching a video. So videos that were entertaining, long, and easy to produce. Entertaining? long and easy to produce. Totally overperformed on the platform of YouTube. And as a result, video game content surged. But of all that content, Minecraft was the one that dominated. Whether it was questing, building, storytelling, parody songs, or animating, Minecraft's toolset was a perfect palette for the way that new YouTube functioned. It occupied most of the homepage. It filled most recommended videos. Channels grew to tens of millions of subscribers in a matter of months. Um, like for example, Dream. <clears throat> Minecraft was suddenly the second most searched for term on the platform right behind music. Eventually, music. YouTube had to take matters into its own hands and heavily nerf the appearance of Minecraft from across the platform. But by that... Well, by then, it's just too OP already. At that point, the impact had been made. Millions of young gamers looking for information about the game had found YouTube. And now, we're staying on YouTube. YouTube was now their place to find information, their place to find entertainment, and their place to be inspired by the creators. True, Captain Sparkle, Smosh, Epic Meal Time, Let's Play Minecraft, Minecraft, Freddy, Mr. Guitar Man, uh, Diamond My Heart. That they were watching. All of it. All of it in large part because of Minecraft. And in turn, YouTube received billions upon billions of watch hours, setting them on a path to where they are today. The TV killer. The second most used <laughs> website on the internet. The top entertainment platform for viewers of across all different ages. Any way you slice it, Minecraft was a huge driver in the online video revolution, taking people away from their TV screens and bringing them to watch content on computers and later mobile screens. When your small indie game helps shape a generation's online habits while also propelling that website to be the number two website in the world, so much so that 30% of kids now want to grow up to be a YouTuber, that, my friends, is a game that has an impact. That is, without question, a most important game of the decade. So, having said all of that, what could possibly rival Minecraft in terms of impact? What? Dota, LOL, my Fortnite. Other game from this decade could possibly come close to shaping not just gaming, but the entire world as much as Mojang's little indie masterpiece. Please don't get mad at me, Dota fans, but I gotta say... Oh! When he mentioned, mm, please don't get mad at me, Dota fans, oh, we know what we're talking about. LOL.
League of Legends. You see, the past it's decade's awesome. online video revolution wasn't just limited to people recording and uploading videos to YouTube. It was also the decade where we saw the birth of online streaming. And while many other streaming services existed Same. prior to 2010, including Ustream and Mogulus, one managed to dominate, Justin.tv. What, you never heard of Justin.tv? You might know it as it's the place that offered people the opportunity to do 24-7 live streams of their lives. Or, I suppose you might oh. know it better by its rebranded name, Twitch, the internet's home to live stream video games. True. Just like dominoes knocking over each other, with online game live streaming came the next massive revolution in gaming, eSports. And the main e domino to start it all was League. Now, let me make this perfectly clear. League of Legends is far from the only eSport out there, and far from the only popular game to live stream. Duh. But if you look Duh. at the history of esports and streaming, League of Legends over the last decade has made a bigger splash than literally any other title. For the past decade. And while well, yes, League's first official release was in October of 2009, pretty much everything notable I about WoW, from the bulk of its content to the ripple effects of its impact, have happened during the 2010s, thereby making it one of the most important games of this decade. But to truly understand League of Legends' role in all this, we first have to look backward. I mean, the idea of gaming competitions has been around since the early days of arcade tournaments. Some of those early grassroots competitions would eventually sprout into larger events that are part of the esports landscape like EVO, the world's largest fighting game tournament. The Cyber Athlete Professional League started back in 1997 during the early days of Counter-Strike. Throughout the 2000s, you had organizations like Sevo and Major League Gaming doing things like putting professionally produced coverage of Halo matches on broadcast television, all in an attempt to make video game competition a mainstream event. But the Make a mainstream event, just like um, the major sports league involved. and many of the other early professional gaming attempts never truly cracked the formula for modern esports. Professional level competition supported by, and this is the tricky part, a sports-like framework. You see, history Mm, well, that is definitely true. A major TV network. Now that is important. Historically, esports faced a massive coordination problem because it required five things to happen all at the same time. You needed first and foremost a game that had a high skill ceiling. Then you needed players who were eager to play and master the game. Then you needed an organizer that was willing to put competitions together. Fourth, you needed a broadcast system that was able to bring the game to the spectators. And finally, you needed spectators who were willing to show up and watch those players compete. If any of these um, steps are missing, as what Matt have mentioned, nah, it's not going to be a success. It's not going to be a success. But that's the thing. That's the thing. League of Legends actually managed to make it occur, make it happen, and that's impressive. Without one of these pieces, it all collapses. And to do all five of those things at a critical scale that would make it mainstream would be nigh on impossible for even the most enthusiastic third-party gamers. Enter League of Legends. Riot Games changed everything by being the first game developer to commit their own money to growing their esports scene. Before, other competitive games like Counter-Strike and StarCraft had relied on tournaments run by third parties. But Riot running their own league was their way of announcing to the world that they were here to stay. Not only could players, competitors, yeah, here to stay. viewers and coaches expect League to continue to be viable as a spectator sport in the future, but they could become invested in the game because they knew that Riot was committed to developing League as an eSport and optimizing it for competitive play. They hosted True. the first ever League of Legends competitive season back in 2011 with a World's Championship prize pool of $99,500. And that's not only that's in a game spectrum. Right, outside of that, I've been reading books, novels, comics, mangas, television shows, movies, like big movies, big budget movies that focuses on gaming, that focuses on players being a game. The, protagon the protagonist of the movie is a gamer. Ah, now that's super interesting. By Season 3, they so. created the Legends Championship Series. By 2015, League's World Championship pulled in 43,000 live, in-person viewers in Wait, wait, did you just say 4-0? 4-4, 3-0-0-0.
In this in addition to the 36 million people that were watching it online. To put that number into perspective, the 2015 NBA Finals, most viewed NBA Finals series ever to air on ABC, pulled in an average of less than 20 million viewers. When your video game is pulling in more viewers than mainstream sports, I'd say that's a pretty big deal. In short, Riot had pioneered a model for any game looking to become an esport, and it's a model that we now see repeated in the space over and over and over again by every one from Dota 2 to Overwatch. And yes, True. let me cover my butt here and say this. It's worth mentioning that League's first championship was in June of 2011, and Valve announced and later held their first edition of the big Dota tournament, the International, two months later. Was it inspired by League? Can't say for sure. And while yes, the International now has insane dollar amounts for its prize pool, League of Legends really True. does have the first mover advantage here, so... We got you know, first mover advantage, true, and that was, this video came out in year 2019. Can you imagine what the skill increased, especially when 2020 hits, 2020 and 2021, people have been stay at home. Got to give it to League. But of course, there's more here. This isn't just a story about who did the esports first. League of Legends tops this list of important games alongside Minecraft because its foray into esports ended up at the perfect time. At the same time that the game was really coming into its own competitively, video game live streams were entering the mainstream. Which of course means it's now time to talk about Twitch. Live Twitch. streaming was just what League of Legends really needed to take off as an esport, and an esport like League was just what live streaming needed to bring an audience to its platform. True, entertaining, long, easy to produce contents. Watching players practice, grinding away at their favorite game for hours on end to refine their technique has been the lifeblood of Twitch since the beginning, and what helped cement it there was League of Legends. In December of 2012, Twitch published stats showing the most viewed game on the platform. It was League of Legends, followed by StarCraft, World of Warcraft, and then Dota. Seven years later, this December of 2019, believe it or not, it's the same thing. League of Legends is still in the top spot, with over 79 million monthly viewer hours. It's still more viewed than any other game on the platform, including Fortnite, GTA, and yes, again, Dota. Hey, there's a newcomer in 2020, and his name is Among Us. League had, and continues to have, a huge role on the continued success of Twitch. And as a result, the domino effect that game streaming has had on wider internet culture. League bringing viewers to Twitch helped it to grow to the point of it selling to Amazon, which in turn legitimized gaming live streams to the point that YouTube and Facebook rolled out their own live gaming initiatives. It's why Mixer and Caffeine exists. It's why Pla- uh, that- Video did not exist, did not issue out. Well. Mm. Yeah, makes a. Mm. Yeah fight over the ninjas and Nick A30s of the world. Fortnite would not be the mega hit game it is today if it wasn't for League paving the way for it 10 years prior. In short, outside of just being a really smart, well-crafted game run by a company that was thinking ahead of the curve, even if some recent business practices have been called into question, League of Legends is a game that has created countless careers. Not just for esports players, but for streamers, broadcasters, analysts, production staffers, coaches, and many, many more. Some games shape existing industries, but League of Legends is a game that can actually claim to have played a pivotal role in creating a brand new one. And for League to still have itself over 100 million active monthly players 10 years after its launch, that, my friends, is what I would call an important game of this decade. Literally a decade for that decade, in the decade. And who knows, maybe even one that'll be able to stay important into the next. So, there you have it, loyal theorists. My top eight most important games of the decade. Why did I choose eight? Well, as I thought about the list, those were just the games I settled on. I didn't really go in planning for a certain number. So what do you think? Did I miss a game that obviously was deserving on this list? I promise it isn't personal. The world of gaming is vast enough that I could list dozens of games and still leave out important entries. But if there's a game that you really think deserved more credit than it got, scroll down the comments section. Toss a coin to your witcher, and after that it's the God of War! Hello and let Among Us also. Let me know, maybe it'll appear in a future video. Who knows? I thought very seriously about Skyrim. Skyrim is the one that 
just missed the list. Basically, I was gonna give Skyrim a place on this list for really forwarding the whole open world concept to mainstream, but it existed in a large part before Skyrim, and honestly, as we move into 2020s, people have already moved past that as a genre. The industry milked it so dry and did such a poor job of it, if I'm being honest, that players just aren't as interested in open world gaming anymore. So honestly, Skyrim should have had a place on this list, but the uh, rest of the gaming industry totally let them down. So sorry, Skyrim. Better luck next time. Oh, wait, your next time was Fallout 76. Whoopsie. Undertale is another one that I expect to see a lot of comments about and honestly is one that I considered very heavily including in my list, but True West of Bowes Undertale. Undertale is very much a gamer's game. Yes, Undertale was a super revolutionary game, unlike anything I'd ever played before, but I haven't seen a lot of other games trying to mimic this or take inspiration from Undertale. There's a couple of indie things here and there, but for the most part, Undertale hasn't had the massive ripple effects of a lot of the other games on this list. So, while revolutionary in its own right, because it didn't have a wider impact on the gaming industry or the world at large, I had to leave it off the list. So with those out of the way, onward, to 2020, my friends. Will VR finally find its place? How big can esports really get? Will Disney just finally buy Pokemon and dominate the entire world? And will companies oh, finally what? stop being greedy little shills? Probably no to that last one. But we'll be covering it all anyway. So make sure you subscribe. Ring the bell for another decade of incredible content. And Thank as you. always... I need to do... I need to do us. Uh, I need to. I need to ask you to stop. That shouting is making people nervous. Me using sky, uh, clear sky to give the people of white run, of right run a bright sunny day. Oh, a bright sunny day. Is remember, it's all just a theory, a game theory. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching the video and help supporting everyone. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you do like this video, please consider to like, share, subscribe to my channel, and comment down below if you have anything to share with us. Thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate all of your support and follow. I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much. <laughs> Alright. But, hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video. This video came out from YouTube channel The Game Theorist and is the first video in the year 2020, which is last year. Oh my god, I feel so old already. Um, yeah, so thank you all so much. I sincerely appreciate if all of you watch more of the videos and show support for The Game Theorists. If you do like my videos, please consider to like, share, subscribe to my channel, and comment down below if you have anything to share us. Do remember to follow my channel as well. Sincerely appreciate it. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, yeah, and, and that's all. <laughs>